Hello everybody. In principle, so far, we got to know all point symmetry elements and operations. So why do we have to consider another symmetry operation, namely rotary reflections? Well, because concerning symmetry, there are two in a way separate worlds. The world of molecules and the world of crystals. Interestingly, during the evolution of natural science, these two worlds were dominated by different scientists, which introduced slightly different approaches to symmetry and systems of nomenclature, which we have to live with today. And I think it is good if you are familiar with both systems. On the one hand, there was Arthur Moritz Schönflies. He was the one who compiled and developed the description of the 230 space groups of crystals in 1891. Nearly simultaneously, the Russian scientist Fedorov also catalogued the 230 space groups. The nomenclature of symmetry elements according to Schönflies was later mainly used to describe the symmetry of molecules. This means finite objects, which show only point symmetry. The nomenclature of symmetry in the area of solid-state matter was later, in the 20th century, modified by two scientists, namely Karl Hermann and Charles Victor Morgan. This symbolism is now used as the worldwide standard in the crystalline world, and here not only point symmetry is present but translational symmetry as well. Four of the five possible point symmetry elements are handled in an identical manner in both worlds. Identity, mirror planes, rotational symmetry and center of inversion. But the fifth one, these rotor inversions, are expressed in the world of molecules differently, namely by or as rotary reflections. It will turn out that these two symmetry elements and the respective symmetry operations are fully equivalent. It does not matter if you carry out a rotor inversion or a rotary reflection, as long as the object at hand has the respective symmetry, logically. Ok, let's see in a first example what the difference between a rotor inversion and a rotary reflection is. You already know that a tetrahedron has a fourfold rotor inversion axis. This is shown here again. First a rotation by 90 degrees is carried out, followed by a mirror ring at a point, an inversion, namely at the center of this tetrahedron. The same symmetry relationship can also be expressed as a rotary reflection. The respective symmetry element is called rotation reflection axis, or also improper axis of rotation. Here, the first step of this combined operation is identical, a rotation by 90 degrees. However, as the second step, a mirroring at a horizontal mirror plane is carried out. A horizontal mirror plane is a mirror plane which penetrates this rotational axis at an angle of 90 degrees. Or to express this in another way, a mirror plane whose direction of the normal vector is identical with this axis. As you can see, also this rotary reflection leads to an indistinguishable configuration. As the rotational part was 90 degrees, it is a rotary rotation of the order 4 and the respective symmetry element is a fourfold rotation reflection axis or a fourfold improper axis of rotation, respectively. Interestingly, here in this example, the order of the rotor inversion and the rotary reflection is identical. However, this is not generally the case. Let's look at another arrangement of objects, which possesses rotational inversion or rotational reflection symmetry, respectively. This arrangement of locomotives. This arrangement has a three-bar, thus a three-fold rotor inversion axis. Let's reproduce this. First, we have to rotate the locomotives by 120 degrees. 
So this locomotive comes over here and then we have to carry out an inversion. Indeed, this is a symmetry operation as you can see. We can take another locomotive, rotation by 120 degrees, inversion and so on. Ok, now we want to express the same symmetry relationship by an improper axis of rotation. What is the order of this improper axis of rotation? Think for a while. Yes, right, a six-fold improper axis of rotation. This implies rotation of 60 degrees and then mirroring this locomotive at a plane perpendicular to this axis. Yeah, a symmetry operation. Ok, to practice this a little more, you can do the following assignment. Try to determine the order of A, the rotor inversion, and B, the rotary reflection of these two arrangements of locomotives.